Oh, God. Welcome. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about a ridiculous deal that I picked up about two weeks ago, and it has literally taken me two weeks to get this build. We found the most ridiculous deal that you could possibly see on Facebook Marketplace, as far as I'm concerned anyway. We were going to look to buy an RTX 4090. That was my plan. Even though the 5090s were coming out pretty soon, I still wanted to get a 4090. Uh, I was getting a bit impatient and I was just looking to buy something. And I found one that was relatively cheap. And I was like, yep, that's what I'm going to go do. I went and got the money out of the bank. And then I got back and then I pulled out. And I was like, nah, 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 nah. We, let's just wait and see what the 50 series looks like, which is probably going to be ridiculous money. But anyway, and then I was literally looking through Facebook Marketplace one day and come across someone who was urgently selling, urgently selling all of this. Everything you see in that picture. And I messaged the guy and I said, look, is this the price for everything in that picture? He's like, yes. I was like, I'm getting in the car and I'm coming down there right now to pick that up because that's just ridiculous. So we jumped in the car. We went down there late on a Saturday night. I literally unbuilt all of it in his driveway and put it in my Honda Record. I stacked it and tetris it into my Honda Record. And then we brought it all home and unpacked it the very next day. And what we have is a track racer, TR160 Simric. We have a track racer single monitor stand, the single monitor stand that also can be a triple monitor stand. We have a Logitech G29 steering wheel pedals shifter. We have a Logitech Z or G506 whatever those speakers are, the big daddies, the 300 watt or 500 watt 5.1 channel speakers. And we picked up all this, oh, actually, and there were some extras on top of the SIM rig, the TR160, there was the wheels that come with it, the speaker stands, uh, the TR1 mount and the proper mount for my Moser R9, so I was absolutely stoked with that. Uh, a few extra add-ons, the gear, the gear lever, the seat as well. It even come with the TRGT seat. My God. And you know how much I paid for all this? 800 Australian dollars. 800 Australian dollars. For anyone in America, I think that's like 500 USD. Man, an absolute damn steal. That's more than what the speakers, well, the speakers and the G29 are about that without the rig and the rig's the most expensive part my mind was blown i had to get in the car and i had to get there get down and get it as soon as possible because he was selling it on the day so anyway that's what i did and then i got at home the next day got it all out and the thing is like brand new condition all of it i was blown away man so what i had to do was build it as quickly as possible i was excited i was like okay let's go and the next day, it took me about two weeks to build it, honestly. I had so many interruptions. I was sick for a while. That's why I haven't seen many videos. Uh, but we built it. We put it all together. And now, we've, we've ha well, we're half done. We've got the rig built. We've got everything done here. We don't have the monitor stand as yet built. That is going to be done at a separate time. Um, but we've got the speakers done. We've got everything here, as you guys can see in the video. And... I just want to talk about the TR160, to be honest. We'll focus on that because that's, that's the showpiece, right? And rock solid piece of equipment, to be honest, rock solid. The, the joins and the L pieces and the brackets and the things that bolt this thing together are solid. It's not the easiest thing to build because they've got those big four prong pieces, um, four corner brackets that um, have to be sort of manipulated uh, they can be quite tricky, but once it's built and bolted together, man, that thing is, it ain't moving. It's definitely not moving. And uh feels really good to sit in. 
It's a little bit upright. It's a little bit GT position. Um, a little bit higher than what I'm used to. So I do have to move my monitors and everything up to kind of compensate for all that. I've got it sort of set up quite well where it's comfortable. But uh, we're going to put that monitor stand on, do all that and get all that set up as well. So pretty excited about all that. But this is what it looks like all set up. And I'm pretty happy with the rig so far. I mean, this is, it's one of the higher end track racing um, kits that you can get. One of the older, I think it's the older model. Um, could be the Mark IV maybe. But yeah, look, everything fits really, really well. Um, so I'm super happy with it. I would recommend it. There is a couple of pros and cons, and that's the kind of things I'll talk about right now, is the pros are the things rock solid. Rock solid. The build, uh, although I only half built mine because it was already built, it wasn't the easiest, to be honest. And it's not as uh, plug and play with other equipment as you might think because of pretty much the T-nuts that they use. It was very different to my last rig, which was fully custom, by the way, and I could bolt anything on there and use any type of bolt and any type of T-nut, and it wouldn't matter. But with this, you have to have the specific T-nuts. Um, you can buy them with the ball bearing or with the spring. Uh, so you can still buy them. It's not out of the question, but you can't use just generic T-nuts with it, which um, was kind of disappointing. I mean, you can, but it's very hard to get the bolts in there's there's big valleys uh, in the T-nut, in the T-slots, so you'll really struggle to get them to align properly with the smaller ones. Um, but outside of that, the pros, are, it's a fantastic build. It's quality. Um, there's no real concerns with the rig so much. It is a very high seating position. You know, that's, that's one thing. You are sitting kind of very high up, so if you are very tall, you may struggle, uh, but I don't think so because it, it's very long. It's, it was a lot longer than my last rig. It had probably 40 centimeters on my last rig, so you need more space. You do need a lot of space if you're gonna if you're gonna use this system. It's a big, big rig. Um, and yeah, other than that, the adjustments. It's probably more adjusting the rig. Um, I because I have such a small space, I had to cram everything in and I had to move my pedals and move my seat forward and everything right up close to the front end of it. Uh, so I had to do a little bit of uh, modifications to it to get it to work that way, uh, but it worked and it seemed to work fine and I had to use some aftermarket brackets, but we got it to work and it all sits pretty well. The gear shift is in a good position. The handbrake's also in a good position. I probably got to work on the handbrake and move it a little. Um, but yeah, and that all runs off the one uh, gear shifter bracket. So I managed to fit my handbrake and my, ge my gear shifter uh, and gearbox on there. So that's sick. Um, the pedals, the pedal plate was quite good. Uh, it's not as customizable as it looks. Uh, especially if you want to mount your pedals low because of the shape of the brackets uh, you will hit the floor with the brackets so you can't go as deep or as low as you really would like to so that's a little bit of um, something to think about if you've got really high pedals like I do I've got Simpson Pro pedals that sit up quite high uh, you want to go low with your pedals and the bracket for the pedals may hit the floor uh, so that's something to think about if you don't have the wheels and that was another thing if you add the wheels to it it sits you up really high which is great for getting into the rig uh, but your feet will not touch the floor when you're sitting on the seat because you're so high up that your feet will dangle and I don't know if you like that um, I don't really I'll probably get a plate or a floor for it uh, but yeah that was also a little bit of a concern because like you're just really high up and then yes everything has to come up your screens and everything has to go up so i'm going to put the wheels back on when i do the screens uh but i'm gonna to have to lift everything up again so it can be quite high and quite a big system when you're done you got to think big with this thing everything is going to be big um but yeah 
outside of that, there's probably that's probably the only downfalls. I would say the seat that I got, I'm not overly excited with the seat. It's got a bit of flex in it in the back, uh, in the backrest. When you're hard on the brakes, you feel the seat flex. So I got, I'll put a picture of it, but I got the GT seat um, from Track Racer, and I think there would be better seats out there. But because I literally got a seat for free, uh, I'm definitely going to use it. And also where the um, where the seat belts go into the uh, rig is very wide. It's too wide for my shoulders, so it's kind of just rubs me, and it doesn't quite sit in the middle. And no matter where I bolt them at the bottom, they all seem to flare out. So it doesn't quite bolt you in very well. So if you're thinking about seat belts, that's something else to kind of think about as well. Uh, other than that, if you're going to get the speaker bracket edition for this rig or for any track racer rig i found that setting up rear speakers in a rig is pretty much a waste of time you don't hear cars coming behind you with those speakers um, i think because it's so front everything's coming from the front that you don't really hear them anyway so um but you know that that was just my experience yours could be totally different and i suppose with track racer you got to remember that if they do sell a lot of accessories and that's more and more cost on top of that as well so if you're going to buy a track racer kit and you don't want to do aftermarket stuff because it can be relatively tricky because it's all sort of oem kind of made um you're gonna it, it, it is easier just to buy from them and their accessories are not overly expensive depending on what it is some are cheaper than others um, but for instance a keyboard stand um, if you're going to get the floor uh, and all these little extra bits and pieces that you can buy which are, which are really functional uh, and quite good by the way most of it looks really good quality um, but that's going to cost you more and more on top too so you got to remember that if, if you're going to go that far I've got a custom keyboard stand and I'm probably going to buy the floor and I've also got the pedal uh, adjustment um, bracket whatever that is with the handle where you can slide the pedals forward and back i've also got that coming as well um, that's something i would like as other people use my rig at times when i'm showing people how they can use it but they can't reach the pedals so if i can bring those pedals forward uh, hopefully that'll allow people enough to be able to drive as well so but other than that guys this was a ridiculous deal i must say um, i sold some of the components to bring back the cost of what i paid even though it was very little uh, so all up, um, well we also bought a Quest 3 and that's another video that we've got coming soon so make sure you subscribe for that one. But the Quest 3, I sold my Quest 2, I sold the Logitech G29, I kept the speakers, I'm selling my old set of speakers. All up, I've got a monitor stand here, the Track Racer monitor stand which I haven't installed yet. I'm going to sell my old monitor stand and I believe it's going to cost me nothing. To do this upgrade i'm going to make my money back and i'll have a brand new rig and pretty much everything is going to be track racer but it's going to look awesome it's going to be all black and red it's going to be set up really well and it's going to make it just a lot more uh i think cleaner and a lot sharper and maybe not just so messy in terms of like components and things everywhere it's going to look quite uh consistent and i'm going to be really happy with it i think in the end so it does feel more comfortable to a degree than my old rig so far a little bit sturdier but only probably because it's not on wheels um but yeah i'm really happy with it guys um i hope you got something out of this video i hope it helps you if you're buying track racer components a few things to think about there uh, but yeah and another thing i would say is there is great deals out there if you're patient and you can wait and you can watch and you don't need things straight away you can find really really good components um, that people just they don't want anymore i mean these people didn't know what it what it was worth when uh they sold it so they just wanted to get rid of it because i'm moving house so great deal whatever people don't know that's the best deal you could possibly find so i I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you want some more and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace out.